Hi, I'm Angela Camper and I'm with David Chandler, the Building Commissioner again. Uh, welcome, David. Angela, it's good to be back because there's a lot of news to share with you. So, David, you've been in the role of the Building Commissioner for a, a year now and taken some big strides forward. Um, in your reform, how do you feel about the first year and uh, some of the challenges and successes so far? Well, Angela, we've been, had benefited by the fact that we've now had two major pieces of legislation stood up. So we're now enabled. The government's been really supportive. We've now got resources to get on with the project. So we've now been able to move the narrative away from, I guess, the defensive position we had a year ago to now the leading position. So, for example, we're now no longer talking about risky players so much, but what do the trustworthy players look like? So the whole concept of trustworthiness of buildings and the right for consumers to expect a trustworthy building is now starting to be the centrepiece of the conversation. Right, so you've, I mean, you've got such an emotive value-led um, based goal leading this reform, rather than just material changes that we, we might often see. Um, how are you defining trustworthiness in terms of real terms in ways that give the industry clear guidance? Well, we've had to pick on a, a word that's going to be universal in its nature. So people were initially talking about a quality building, but unfortunately that doesn't quite get you there because a, a quality building, for example, could be like a Corolla, Toyota Corolla, where you'd say, well, that's one level of quality, and a Toyota Lexus is another level of quality. But you know, both of those, while they're different quality, are absolutely trustworthy. So we've actually tried to make sure that we find a word that can meet a consumer expectation about what they should feel and get. So the word trustworthiness has then got a number of meanings to define it. It's, it we're of, of the view that a trustworthy building doesn't harm people while you're making them and it doesn't harm them when they're made and people are using them. We've used those principles as being the, as the guiding headline and when we define harm we're saying that it doesn't harm people physically, doesn't harm them economically, it doesn't harm them emotionally and buildings should have a much lower footprint on the, um, on the carbon economy than they have had in the past. So we're focusing on those four harms. And you've been working with the finance industry. Tell me a bit about that. Well, it's been interesting, Angela, because um, the, the finances were concerned initially about is New South Wales going to pose a new lending risk with my powers under the Residential Apartments Act? And uh, because I've got the ability to stop occupation certificates being issued as we discussed last time. But the reality is that um, the banks are now starting to become very aware that they need to put more attention into the way they finance projects and the way they look into projects for paying down developer progress claims. I had a, develop a bank on site with me just recently and they followed me through on one of our OC audit inspections and they were really quite shocked at what they'd so seen and, and then what they had paid for by way of developer drawdowns. So I think we're going to see banks playing a much more active role going forward. That's great. Thanks, David. Well, you certainly had a big year and there's a whole lot more to do. Um, the Design and Practitioner Act regulations from 1 July next year. Uh, I look forward to talking to you again. Thank you.